Hey everybody, my name is Ampere Beep, and welcome back. Last week's video had an incredible amount of support. Thank you everybody for commenting down below and joining our Discord server. We had some really great discussions there, and we are planning some meetups for anybody who lives in Southern California. I'm a little bit sick right now, so if you hear my voice sound a little bit shaky or a little bit off, that's why. Also, I'm going to be reducing my video upload schedule. Last week, I stated in the comment section that I'd be making a video a week, but now that my semester is starting to pick up steam, I think it might be better if I made a video every other week, especially because progress between weeks is usually not that significant, as there's only one Sentinel-2 imagery update a week. This will also give me time to help gauge community interest in certain topics, which you can help contribute to in the Discord server, link down below. It's a great place to go talk to myself, a lot of the California residents, and even non-California residents. We have a California high-speed rail research channel, which is where we post information we find out about the project, as well as a meetups channel, where we plan meetups between residents, as well as just general discussions on transit or the likelihood of funding being received for the project. Feel free to join us. We'd love to see you down there. Now, I also have created a Patreon. There aren't any extra benefits you'd get through supporting me, but if you feel like throwing $5 my way, I would graciously accept it. Don't feel pressured to, though. I'd like to thank my good friend, Fumo Fomer SD for the B-roll footage in the background you see right here. Now, enough with the introductions. Let's jump right in. Now, there's a single video of a rendering of the Merced de Madera section from a design firm that I believe tried to put in this as their bid to design the Merced de Madera section, and I'll play it through. It's five minutes long, and it should tell you everything you need to know. The project starts at the northerly end of Merced and encompasses the portion being re-examined to include an elevated station. RSC is currently providing the engineering for this effort. The re-examination designs have leveraged precious work on the high-speed rail. The Merced to Madera design will therefore begin with the trench and viaduct structures developed to near a level of 30%. In coordination with Caltrans, plans for constructing the high-speed rail tunnel under SR99 using cut and cover methods while maintaining traffic in both directions have been developed for the re-examination. From SR99 to Sandy Mush Road, the alignment is parallel to SR99 and the Union Pacific Railroad. The terrain is flat, and the route runs through largely agricultural land on embankment fill. Minimizing imported fill will be one of the design goals for this reach. The design team has broad experience in performing geotechnical investigations on the high-speed rail corridor. A focus will be on identifying suitable borrow sites and alternatives to importation of material over large distances. The alignment continues to the south toward the Y, running parallel to Road 11. Minimizing impacts to farms here and throughout the alignment will be an important goal. Contiguous ownership may require under or over crossings for farm equipment and other access to landlocked parcels. At the Y, the southbound track will cross over the future main tracks to San Jose. The design team brings direct experience in the investigation, design, and construction of viaducts on the California high-speed rail network and on similar projects. Just east of the Y, the alignment becomes parallel to Highway 152. At Robertson Boulevard, SR233, a new interchange will be required, along with shifting the alignment of the highway. Facing the work to minimize impacts to traffic will be a major focus of the design. Continuing east, Chowchilla is to the immediate north. Several north-south arterial roads cross the proposed alignment and Highway 152. New bridges, along with realignment of this highway, will be required. Again, a major focus will be on designing for phased construction and minimum impacts to existing traffic. Continuing east, the alignment crosses SR-99 and the Union Pacific Railroad. Early coordination with Union Pacific and Caltrans here, as at other crossings, will help guide the design. The design team will also leverage extensive experience from similar work to address challenges early. 
From this point, the alignment swings to the south past Fairmead and into open farmland towards Madeira. At road 22, the proposed alignment passes a very high voltage power line. The design team will make this an early priority to avoid the potential for significant changes to the final design. At Avenue 20.5, a curved overcrossing will be designed. The team will evaluate construction options to minimize footprint and impacts. Finally, this segment connects to Contract Package 1, which is currently under construction. That was the Merced to Madera section. Unfortunately, we do not have a video nearly as good, or at all, for the Fresno to Bakersfield LGA, or the Shafter to Bakersfield section. This one starts out right at Poplar Avenue, so you can see Poplar Avenue right here. Shafter Light Maintenance Facility, or maintenance of way facility. We are not quite sure exactly what they're going to build here. As we move south, you can see on the designs here, this is the facility that they're proposing to construct. We continue moving further south. Now we're in Shafter. They will be relocating to Larry Avenue and Shafter Avenue, and they, were going to be, they are going to be closing this uh, grade crossing. We continue moving further south. There will be a grade separation at Central Avenue and East Lairdo Highway. There will be another viaduct at this BNSF industry spur to allow access to it. We continue further south, East Los Angeles Avenue will be closed here and it will begin leaving the BNSF alignment and it will cross Riverside, Cherry, Orange Avenue, which is currently a dirt access road where it will close, where it will be closed. Mendota Street will also be closed as well as this dirt path here and this one. Driver Road will be built over with a viaduct and then it will follow Burbank Street crossing over Zachary Avenue, continuing forward and crossing the Callaway Canal, which they're proposing to relocate, and then turning south, crossing Zerka Road, the Freant Kern Canal on a bridge, Verdugo Lane, which will be put in a box culvert, it seems, the Lairdo Canal, which will also be relocated, and then when it reaches the UPRR alignment, where it's right next to State Route 99, it will be put on a viaduct. It will cross over 7th Standard Road, continue forward until it reaches Snow Road, where it will be put back onto an embankment and continue until it reaches this location here where it will be put right back onto a viaduct. And then it will cross State Route 99 at Nudson Drive, continue on a viaduct past all of this BNSF track, Airport Drive, the Callaway Canal again, as well as the Kern River Basin. And then we are finally at the Bakersfield Station as we get here. You can see the north side storage track here. This will be constructed in a very similar way to the Hanford Viaduct. It continues and we're at the platforms. These uh, semi-hatched squares or rectangles you see here are the platforms. Forms. So the High Speed Rail Authority has a standardized design where you have two through tracks in the center and two station tracks on the outside. And then the station platform continues here. You get a second storage track on the southbound side. And then the storage track ends right after Chester Avenue. And this is where I believe the alignment will end as going beyond that serves no useful purpose to the remainder of the project until the Bur uh, Bakersfield to Palmdale section is constructed. Now that I've said that, we can go look at the alignment very quickly. This alignment begins in Merced at the Merced station which is planned to be constructed between R and O Street off of West 15th. It will continue as shown under the State Route 99 bridge here, following the Fresno subdivision of the Union Pacific Railroad, continuing on a curve, getting to the Y, crossing State Route 99, making a slight curve and ending at Avenue 19. And then we start at Poplar Avenue, where it continues south along the BNSF right-of-way through the center of Shafter, making a right turn, meeting up with Burbank Street, continuing on alongside the Fresno subdivision again, crossing State Route 99, and ending right here after Chester Avenue. You can see on this alignment the remainder of the route, which continues up through the Pacheco Pass, and then it's very difficult to see because there are a lot of other rails here that overlap. And on the south side, you can see the alignment through Tehachapi, following through Lancaster, and then down through, I believe this is Soledad Pass into LA, where it follows BNSF till it gets to the Anaheim Regional Transportation Intermodal Center. Now here is the project timeline. On the left you can see 2023, and on the right you can see 2033. Now this shows exactly what the timeline will be between now and when the train opens, the end of the year 2030. So the first section that we should see begin static testing will be CP4, and that will occur roughly in 2028. The Bakersfield extension will be the last one completed. Additionally, testing and certification will occur up until the year 2030, where we will see them finish up certifying the train sets with the FRA, 
today at full speed, testing out all of the new equipment and readying all the stations. Now, as you can see, with the track and systems work being done, the design work at least, all of the right-of-ways will be prepared for track laying once they're done with construction, which is great news. Train sets should be delivered in 2026. Now in this, you can see substantial completion for CP4 will be done in September 2023, followed by the completion of preliminary design for the Merced and Bakersfield extensions in mid-2024, which means they reach 30% design. Later on in 2024, they will start work laying tracks and building the overhead catenary, specifically in CP4, as that is the first place that will be complete. Then, mid-2025, construction will begin on the Merced and Bakersfield extensions, assuming funding is acquired. Then, 2026, station construction will begin. And later on in 2026, substantial completion of CP1 and 2-3 will be completed. Now, we move on to the next image. Substantial completion of the Merced and Bakersfield extensions will happen in early 2028, along with the first train delivered in mid-2028. Later on in 2028, we will see the 119-mile construction completed and operational testing will begin, followed by station construction completions in 2029. The full extension construction will be done in 2029, and static testing will begin in late 2029, followed by dynamic and complete trial running in 2030, which is when we will begin passenger service. Now we can move on to track and systems procurement. In November 2023, debriefs of the biddings will begin, followed by objective setting, options for packaging, assessing delivery models, and the preliminary strategy. By the time April 2024 happens, we will be in the phase of choosing a rail delivery partner, which will be the ones that deliver the track and systems. This will allow us to start construction now we can move on to the final image I'm going to be showing you. The phasing approach for federal grants. Now we have four phases, technically five, because phase D is split into two segments. Phase A consists of the federal grants from the infrastructure bill, including pending awards, one of which will occur next month, and the other one will occur in either December or January. Everything in dark red is phase A, which is the immediate funding need. This will get us to the point where we have the second track funded, the train sets funded, right of way and other early work funded for the Merced and Bakersfield extensions, as well as final design for the Merced and Bakersfield segments. The last part is a portion of the civil construction for the Bakersfield extension, specifically for six grade separations in Shafter. The next section we need to worry about is phase B, future grants. Only one of them will be a future grant, and that is a portion of the Merced to Madeira segment, which is in light yellow. The third segment is further future grants from the bill. Everything in C, which is cyan, dark cyan. This includes the remainder of the civil construction in the Merced to Madeira segment, a large portion of the Shafter to Bakersfield segment, the Merced to Madeira track and systems, and the Merced to Madeira track and systems. Then we move on to phase D1. This grant will get us a large portion of the track and systems for Shafter to Bakersfield. And then finally phase D2, which will get us the remainder of the civil construction for the Shafter to Bakersfield sections, as well as the final funding for the track and systems in the Bakersfield extension. With all of this money, we will finally be at the point where we have the 171 miles complete, allowing us to open in 2030. With all that out of the way. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everyone who came down to our Discord server. Make sure you join us. We'll be talking about stuff in the next two weeks before the next video. Otherwise, see you then. Thanks for watching.